This is a big salt and sand pile used for winter road maintenance. And it's always full of moose and deer tracks because they come in to lick the salt and they're all over in here. This is the road going into Nine Mile, and it's an old corduroy road, which means when they were building this road and they came through the low, wet area, they laid a bunch of logs down next to each other and graded over the top of them so that it would, it would hold up um, where it's soft. And the problem is, it's, these logs are rotting and it's all washed out, so the road's disintegrating and it keeps getting worse all the time uh, but this is probably the the worst and most rough spot on the whole road Well, we're back at Nine Mile to finish up some work on the cabin. There's three things that we're going to do. One, we're going to finish chinking the outside and the inside of the cabin. Then there's a knee brace that I'm going to replace. It's the first one cracked. And the door. I'm going to adjust the door because as the cabin has settled, it's not closing quite as well as it did at the end of last summer. But the first thing I need to do is empty out the cabin so that I can do the chinking in there. Gray season, the bug free zone. All right, this is our bug-free zone. It's called the Pet Palace from Cave Creek Hammock. And I like showing this to you because it's an awesome thing that we use all the time. And this was custom made for us with a zipper on the side here and one on the end. And the reason for the one on the end is that when we have our, our tarp over the whole hammock, we can access it from the end instead of having to lift the tarp up to go in through the side. So I really like it, it's awesome. All right, I have a couple packages to open before I make dinner. And we'll start with this one because I know what this one is. This one is from, it says Edmondson from Burns or Barnes, Oregon. <clears throat> Probably said that wrong. Corey, I truly enjoy your channel and your dedication to your faith in Jesus the Christ. This is a small token gift for you and Gracie. Sincerely, Mr. Kelly Edmonston from Burns, Oregon. Looks like there's some snacks for Gracie. Some fire plugs, all weather fire starters 
from Bigfoot Bushcraft. That's interesting. I'll definitely be trying these out. And looks like a ferro rod. That's really cool as I actually I don't have one of these. So I've been meaning to get one. And the striker, extra striker with a lanyard. And this stuff was from a company called Bigfoot Bushcraft. So I don't know what Mr. Edmondson's connection is with them, just a brand that he prefers or what, but this looks awesome. Definitely going to use this. Really appreciate this. This stuff is always unexpected. Well, this one was not unexpected. This one, the company reached out to me, a company called Liquid IV, and uh, they make hydration supplements. And so they said they were going to send this, which I'm really excited about. And I'm going to try it right now because I'm pretty dehydrated. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff. We have hydration multiplier, electrolyte drink mix. Uh, this one is lemon lime, strawberry. We have another one, a berry flavor. And a passion fruit flavor. All right, I'm gonna try the passion fruit. It's hydration multiplier powered by cellular transport technology. It's electrolyte drink mix. So it says the cellular transport technology is an optimal ratio of nutrients that delivers hydration rapidly into your bloodstream, hydrating you two to two and a half times faster and more efficiently than water alone. And it tastes really good. I really need this stuff too because I work myself so hard and I don't keep up on hydration a lot of times. <laughs> you guys, you gotta try one of these, they're from they're from one of your, your fans, Mr. Edmondson. Gracie. They smell really good. I, I don't know if they're for Gracie or if I should be eating them. Gracie approved. Keep you zipped up. Keep the bugs out. The bugs have been full force this summer so far, really bad. And my, I, I don't really use bug spray or anything like that. I just use a bug shirt like I'm wearing. But the one that I've had for years and that I was wearing all last summer, I got it, I tore it and got, I fell with a bucket of paint and boundary work and destroyed that. So I had to get another one. and. I picked this one up. This is just the Colgan's brand, the cheap one, and it's it's no good at all. The, they can bite me right through it. So I'm gonna have to order one like I had last time. And that one just, just fit better too. This one's all loose and baggy and just not very good. I'm basically just wearing it for the psychological benefit.
This is a new piece of gear that I learned about from Jake. It's the Big Daddy Skillet. This is the 14 inch model and has a 21 inch handle. So it's awesome for cooking over the campfire. And just attaches the handle with some wing nuts. This is Wagyu beef burger. It's $11.99 a pound and it's totally worth it. It's so nice to be inside the bug free zone. They're just buzzing out there. It wasn't very fun to do any filming, <laughs> especially when my bug shirt fails. But tomorrow, I'm gonna get up, try to get up early, get this cabin done so we can head down the road to the other cabin. That one needs to be chinked too and we have to take the canoe up the river to get there. So hopefully we can get an early start. All right, I'm gonna start the chinking. The first part is to do the touch-up work on the outside, and then I'll move in and do the inside. Last year I used the Permachink product, and this year they got me Log Jam. We'll see if there's any major differences in that. I know the Log Jam is less expensive, <clears throat> uh, but basically these are the tools I have. I have the bucket of chink, the follow plate, the gun, my bucket of water, nylon one inch brush for smoothing it out. That's it, it's that simple. To start off, the backer rod is already in all of the gaps, and then I've just used a paintbrush to dust off any debris that might be on the surfaces. That will ensure that the chinking sticks well. All right, so once I get the bucket open, there's this moisture barrier, and I'm always careful to hold on to that, because if when I don't use the whole bucket, I'm gonna to wanna to put that moisture barrier back on when I seal it up. Then, it's as simple as taking the follow plate, putting it down in there, and then loading up the gun. So to do that, I just take off the nozzle and place the gun over the hole in the middle and pull it back. Place the nozzle and we're good to go. All right, once it's in there and I filled in the gap, and then I just take the wet brush and go over it real lightly just to smooth it out and to push it into the gap. Pretty simple. This stuff so far looks just like uh, the permachink to me, texture, color, and everything. I really can't tell a difference. And if you want to see a really good video 
with more details about this, Dave Whipple, Bush Radical, has an awesome video. Having a liquid IV break. This is the acai berry or acai berry. I don't know how that's pronounced. Crazy. Still working on the outside. Hey, hey. About 75% done with that. It's taking longer than I expected, but that's okay. The only difference I'll say from the log jam to the permachink that I have noticed the log jam seems to set up a little quicker, which is kind of a good thing. It's easier to smooth it out and just manipulate it like that. So um, it's working well. Man, this stuff is awesome. So change of plans. I finished chinking the outside and then looking at the inside and thinking about the chinking that needs to be done at Flaws Bogan, the next cabin up river, I decided not to do the inside of this one. It's really not necessary for what this cabin is and what it's used for. And I have at least a bucket and three quarters of that, the bucket I used to finish the outside here. And I think that will do the entire outside of Floss Bogan. But I replaced the brace that was fractured and I adjusted the door so it closes better now. We're going to pack up and head to Floss Bogan.